you need to maintain a luminor rack ultraviolet disinfection system to make sure the water at your home cottage or cabin is bacteria free and stays safe for your family. But you've never done it before, so you don't know what's involved, you don't know when to do it, you don't know what supplies you need, no problem. In this video, I'll go through the whole process step by step, and I'll also include some of my own tips and tricks so that you can maintain this system like a pro. Hi, I'm Gary the Water Guy, and I simplify water filtration to help you conquer crappy water for your family. Now this video is perfect for you if you're a do-it-yourself homeowner, cottage or cabin owner, and you're, you have one of these Luminor Ultraviolet Disinfection Systems, and you want to learn how to do the maintenance yourself to save money for your family. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly when and how to replace the filters, the UV lamp, and clean the sleeve to make sure this system keeps killing bacteria and performing like new. And you'll definitely want to hang around to the end of this video because throughout I'll be presenting a lot of my tips and tricks to make sure this installation process is super simple. And by the way, Luminor makes ultraviolet disinfection systems for companies like Culligan, Water Depot, and Nelson Corporation, and a whole lot of others. So the replacement procedure for the lamp, the sleeve, and the filters is exactly the same. By the way, if you're not 100% sure about how these ultraviolet disinfection systems work, no problem, I've got a great YouTube video that shows you how. I'll put a link in the description down below. And some general maintenance tips before starting work on your ultraviolet disinfection system. You need to unplug the power from it, you need to shut off the water, you need to open Open up a faucet downstream of the system to release the pressure and then you need to shut off the water coming from the house to make sure it all doesn't drain all through the system when you're replacing the filters or the lamp. So with the UV light portion of the system you can tell how many days you have remaining by pushing the button on the front and it'll show you. This system right now shows 420 days remaining. But as you can see, as it counts down those days, the background screen changes color. It goes from the normal green to yellow when it gets down to 30 days, and then down to 8 days. And then when it gets down to the 7 days, you'll start to get a chirp. And that chirp is to remind you that it's time to change that lamp. And it'll count that down all the way down to zero. And after it gets to zero, it'll go red to tell you that now it's overdue and the water may be unsafe to drink. But to keep that chirp from driving you and your family crazy, you can hold down the button on the front for five seconds and that'll silence it for seven days. If you haven't changed the lamp by then, guess what happens? It starts chirping again. So as I mentioned earlier, the overall maintenance of the system is that the lamp needs to be replaced after 420 days of use. The filters need to be replaced at least once a year or if your water flow slows down because the filters have become clogged, you may need to replace them more often. And if the system is installed in a seasonal location like a cottage or a cabin, you need to drain the whole system at the end of the season. So there's drain ports at the bottom of the filter housings and you can drain the, the, um, the chamber itself by undoing the connections at the end of it and draining all the water out. So before you start, you need to make sure you've got the correct replacement filters and UV lamp. And I always suggest you have a spare sleeve. Why do you need a spare sleeve? Well, you wanna make sure if you go through the whole maintenance process and you end up either damaging that very fragile sleeve or it's so dirty that you can't get it clean that you've got that spare sleeve and it's ready to go. So in addition to the correct replacement UV lamp and sleeve, you're gonna need the replacement filters you're also going to need some supplies. You're going to need CLR to clean the or lime away, some kind of pro cleaning product like that to clean the, the quartz sleeve. You're also going to need a bucket because there will be some water spill during this whole process. You're going to need some rags to clean up those spills. So the first step is shut off your water. Then go anywhere in your house, cottage or cabin downstream of the system, open up a faucet and release all the pressure. Let the water slow right down to a dribble. Once it's slowed down, then you're going to shut off the water going to the house so the whole house doesn't drain back down through the UV system. And then unplug the UV so, so the lamp starts to cool down. While it's cooling down, it's a great time to replace the filters. So with the filter housing wrench that comes with the system, you can use that to loosen up the filter housings and take them off. So again, lefty loosey, righty tighty, and then you can unscrew those filter housings. Now these filter housings have a great feature. So at the bottom of the filter housing, you can see that they've got this drain port here. So you can unscrew that to drain the filter housing before you unscrew it. Why do you need that? Well, believe me, when this filter housing is full of water and full of a filter, it's quite heavy. So if you unscrew that drain port at the bottom, drain out the majority of the water, makes it much easier to replace. And then you dump out the water and the old filter from inside here. So one thing you're 
going to want to make sure you do is look in the bottom and make sure that there's no o-rings caught at the bottom of that filter housing what am i talking about what i'm talking about is these carbon filters have these o-rings at the bottom and sometimes they get they pull out and they end up stuck at the bottom of the filter housing and if you don't notice it and you put the new filter inside and you tighten it up you won't be able to get a stop leaking you keep tightening and tightening and tightening and it still won't leak and you can't figure out why that's why and then you replace the filters one at a time and that way you make sure you don't get them mixed up but in case you do look at the direction of flow the water would go through the sediment filter first the carbon filter second and then on to the old uv light so because this is the first one we'd be putting in the, the sediment filter in the first filter house and then you pop the filter inside and put it back on but before you put it back on use plumber's clear silicone grease on the o-ring to make that uh, o-ring last longer and make it seal better and again we put the filter housing back on again righty tighty lefty loosey so once you put it on tighten it up hand tight and then you use the filter housing wrench to give it just a little bit more to snug it up you want to make sure it's tight enough that it doesn't leak but you want to make sure it's not so tight that you won't be able to get it off the next time so moving forward i definitely suggest you wear either rubber gloves like these or soft cotton gloves in a pinch you can use a clean cloth but the glove approach is always best when we're removing the lamp and the sleeve and cleaning that sleeve removing the lamp is easy you just push in turn the connector and you can see it slides right out and then what you can do is you can just wiggle it a little bit as you're pulling straight off to pull the connector straight off and then you can pull the lamp out carefully set the lamp aside because they do have mercury in them and you don't want to take a chance on breaking them. and then unscrew the gland nut at the end so this should just be hand tight you can just unscrew that and it exposes the quartz sleeve which you can just pull out So be careful when you pull out the cord sleeve because there's a spring at the bottom and that spring is very important and you want to make sure that you don't dump it out and lose it. So once you've taken the cord sleeve out, again handling it with your hands, then you need to use CLR, Lime Away or a product like that. Pour it onto a nice clean rag and clean that sleeve. The sleeve has to become perfectly clean. If you can't get it perfectly clean like new, then you need to replace that sleeve with a new one. And by the way, if you're looking for where to get your replacement lamp, sleeve, and filters, we offer them as a bundle. Just go to our websites, waterestore.com in the U.S., waterestore.ca in Canada. We offer free shipping and discount pricing. We've got a great deal on the filter and the lamp bundles. And by the way, when you're cleaning that sleeve, make sure that you don't get any water inside the sleeve. That's very important because that's where the lamp's going to be sitting. If you do get some water inside there, you're going to need to make sure that you drain it all out and dry it out perfectly before you reassemble. It comes with a new O-ring or you can reuse the old one if it's in good shape. Just make sure you, again, apply some uh, plumber's clear silicone grease to that O-ring when you put it back into the system. So again, handling that cord sleeve with either your gloves or a nice clean cloth to feed that sleeve back into the housing straight nice and straight so it, it fits in there and then you're going to have with the o-ring again you're going to apply plumber's clear silicone grease to that o-ring and you're going to slide it over the end and you're going to slide it right into the groove at the at the end of the reaction chamber then you're going to take the gland nut and you're going to put that back on tighten it up And you'll see that it, it tightens and then there's a, a dead stop. So you know that it's tight enough when it, it just won't go any further. But again, only do it hand tight. And handling the new lamp, again, you feed it in, set it inside there. And again, make 100% sure that that uh, spring is inside there. Once it's inside, take the end of the controller, line it up, and make sure you push it all the way home. Slide it all the way in, which is all the way in, and then slide it inside it slides in give it a slight turn and you can see now it's it's in there for good so before you power it back up again you need to remove the lamp key from the old lamp and then you need to substitute it with the lamp key from the new lamp only the lamp key will work and the system will only reset if you use the correct lamp key that came with the new lamp so make sure you put that in and you put it in with the label facing towards you and right side up so you feed that in there once that key's back in there, you can power the system back up and it's going to go through its start procedure. 
And as it's going through the startup procedure, again, you'll see it searching for um, the different options that may be on this system. And it could be a sensor, it could be a solenoid, could be a number of other things that it goes searching for. And if it doesn't find them, it continues on. This system doesn't have those options. Then it optimizes the lamp and puts it back into service so the lamp's are working 100%. And once it finishes the full lamp optimization, you'll get a green screen, a check mark, and it'll show 420 days remain. And by the way, if you ever want to check to make sure that the light is actually on, if you look right in here, you can see there's a small window and that blue light in there indicates that the UV light is actually on and it's shining out through that window. So next you open up the inlet valve about halfway and start filling the whole system with water and checking for leaks. If there's no leaks, then you can open it up all the way and it's the same with the outlet valve. You can now open that up halfway and again, check for any leaks. There probably won't be any because you haven't disturbed that part of the plumbing and then open it up all the way. Then you're going to go to the nearest faucet that has fairly good flow. So I recommend a laundry sink, a slop sink, or if you have a bathtub nearby, open up that faucet and let the water run. That way, any little fines that were from the filters and that will be flushed out through those faucets. And I recommend you flush out a couple gallons of water to make sure all the fines are gone. Click here for your next video on UV disinfection and I'll see you there. Any questions or comments, add them down below. I read them all and love to answer yours.